Is a thermal imaging camera still useful in the summer in the warmer month? Let's find out. My last video was quite popular for conducting my own little survey of my home and having a look at some of the areas where we could improve the heat loss. So I think we can do a similar thing now that it's very warm with the help of this thermal imaging camera. Here's a good example of one of the things we can use the thermal imaging camera for. Check out how warm that solar inverter is. Sorry for all the reflections. I'm trying to look at two screens at once. Check out the heat sink on the back of this thing. So whilst it was quite nice in the first few months to have this uh, little, I mean, very low power radiator, now I'm glad that we put it in the garage where it doesn't really matter that it's warming up a little bit. Interesting. Can you tell that I've been riding my motorbike? Eighty-eight degrees. Wow. Can certainly see the sun's been beating down on that roller door. Let's go try out the loft. Right, it's very warm in this loft. What I want to see is if we can measure a temperature difference between where the solar panels are and where they aren't. I want to see if the solar panels do manage to somehow protect the loft heating up as much as they as it typically would so let's have a look we've got solar panels the other side of this part of the roof so at the peak 30 degrees in the middle of the rafters 29 degrees okay so it's not a huge variation let's go to this side of the roof which also has the sun on it but it has no solar panels we got here. Wow. So four almost 40 degrees on the side and 36 degrees in the middle. Wow. That's a bigger difference than I realized. And then the back of the house that will be starting to get well, the sun is kind of overhead in the house at the moment. So but that's also got solar panels on it. Once again. The top part won't have any solar panels that high. You can almost see where... Perhaps it's my angle. I'm not sure. Interesting anyway. Okay. So this part here... Much, much hotter. And where the solar panels are over here, it's almost 10 degrees difference that the solar panels are either soaking up that energy and uh, converting it to electrons, or they are just shielding it and we've got an air gap and so it's just creating shade. Probably a bit of both, I'd guess, as uh, you know, an uninformed, um, uninformed homeowner. 24 degrees on the end, right. Could we realistically use this in reverse to work out where the bits are that we would need to insulate? You can see our eaves over there. Right, anyway, let's get out of this loft that's too warm. Where has this heat wave come from all of a sudden? So during a heat wave, you want to try and keep your curtains closed throughout the hottest part of the day and windows closed. Try and shield yourselves. It's always interesting to see the heat emitted by these electronic devices on standby. That's clearly where your phantom load comes from. If you're ever trying to figure out why you're using so much electricity around the house. Showing the sun that comes in through that window. So what about our leakiest part of the kitchen normally? That was where all of the um, cold was coming in. 
in through that vent, but it doesn't seem like it's working in reverse. Okay. And how how well is our insulating insulated roof working on our conservatory? Very well is the answer. Right then, what about outside? Let's have a little look at our roof with this thermal imaging camera. I don't know if it's even gonna have the range. I suspect not. No idea what you can see, because I can't see the screen at all. But let's go inside and see if we can draw any meaningful conclusion from this. So somewhere along the line, I have lost a stack of footage of me testing this and uh, I apologize for that. I've used this in both cold and hot and um, I've found this actually to be really handy and I am preferring it to the topped on TC001 that I previously reviewed on the channel. There's a few reasons. Um, one of the things that was mentioned in the comments was about the thermal accuracy and I did uh, to be honest with you, I've got a th uh, infrared thermometer and I've compared it against the calibration of this Kaiwitz KTI W01 and the Top Don. And I found that the calibration on this is almost exactly the same as the infrared thermometer that I have. Now, who's to say if that's calibrated or not? I'm not sure. But it's something that came up a lot in the previous video that I did and people were wondering if um, if these can be relied upon. Of course, they'll always show you the hot and cold spots and the disparities that may exist. Um, another thing, it's just its own handheld thing. You pull it out of the box and you go. There's no apps, there's no plugging into your phone, anything like that, which of course can be a positive or negative depending on how you want to use it. This has inbuilt storage. So on the side here, you won't see it because I haven't got enough hands, um, under this little flap is a USB-C connector. So you can just plug this in and it works just like USB flash storage. You can just copy any of the videos or images that you take and um, transfer them onto another device, onto a computer or whatever. It's got a little trigger here. I really like the trigger actually for, you just tap it once and it will prompt you. Uh, do you want to take a picture? If you hold down the trigger, then it can start a video. It's got loads of other settings and menus that I haven't really delved into much. I'm quite a basic user, um, but you can um, on the on the uh, like heat map type thing. Uh, <laughs> I should probably learn the technical terms for this. Um, you can reduce the overlay so that you can see the the transparency or the opacity layer or whatever you would refer to it as. So you can adjust that, which is quite handy. Battery life seems really good. So I haven't actively charged it up at all. It's showing that it's pretty much at full battery. Um, the only times that I've plugged this in, I was just plugging it into the PC to uh, download the images or videos and haven't left it plugged in or anything. So the battery life seems to be really good. One of the big concerns that uh, people uh, threw at the Top Dom was that to use the app on your smartphone, you have to give the app certain permissions that people weren't comfortable giving the top don uh, as a, a Chinese device or whatever you want to say, however your perspective is on that. It was an issue for people. Of course, having a remote device that isn't connected by any app and has no influence on your permissions on your device, that could be a good uh, selling point. On the specification front, now this is, was a little bit of a contentious point because I brought up that the FLIR or the FLIR or whatever you are, however you pronounce it, that the resolution and the frame rate on those devices are quite low. Despite that being the market leader, they are behind some of the competition and some of the competition that is considerably cheaper. This has the same high quality, high resolution sensor as the, um, as the top DOM items that I previously reviewed. And um, you can see it has a little lens cover there as well on the top. So you can flip that lens cover up and down. 
And so you could pop the lens cover down and it can just be like chucked in a bag and it can be used. So this, is, I mean, this is a helpful device and because it's uh, relatively cost effective, homeowners could use this for a variety of different applications, home things. But of course, this device is ideal for professional use. Chuck it in a tool bag, plumbers, electricians, um, mechanics. There's so many use cases. I've barely scratched the surface. The other thing with this, it's been totally reliable. The top on, after I'd used it a few times, uh, there was one occasion where I had to disconnect it um, from the from my smartphone and then reinsert it to reboot it. I don't know, a little glitch in the matrix, but um, otherwise this, this device I found really good, good frame rate and even the re recording on the local device works really well. So uh, Kai Wheats, they're not paying me anything to review this item. They have sent this to me as a as a free sample, but they, as I've come to learn from this kind of YouTube uh, device reviewing, some brands, they try and twist your arm and they say you're only allowed to say positive things. Um, and so I've rejected quite a few products now that are on those on that basis that I don't want them to have like any editorial control over what I'm going to say. I will be honest. Um, this feels rugged. It feels well built. I have dropped it dropped it twice actually and once I was up a ladder when it was freezing cold and uh, I managed to drop it but you can barely even see the mark on it I don't even know if the camera will get it I don't know it's quite rugged is you know you don't have to worry about um, throwing around your expensive smartphone as well um, sorry I'm digressing again but um, uh, I do recommend this Kai Wheats they said if this is if this has any value to any of my viewers then they will offer a discount code that I'll put down in the description I don't believe that I'll get any kickback from it I don't think there's uh, any fee or any percentage that I would personally gain from it all I get is the use of this device and uh, trying to showcase something and help other people so Hopefully this has been helpful to you and hopefully I've edited enough of the waffle out that this is a concise video. Fat chance of that happening. Till next time.